Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the amateur theme park design show. I've got three special guests this episode, which has never happened before. Very exciting stuff. Um, hey guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? My name is uh, Drew Mick. I'm Nathan Haynes. And I'm Tanner Ackerman. And you guys are here because I really enjoy your podcast. Could you tell us uh, a little bit about what you guys do? Well, thank you, Andrew. Our podcast is Headline Heroes. Uh, what we do every week, we um, take a random news headline and um, try to create a superhero or supervillain out of it. And through that, we try to interconnect um, all of our creations together, try to make our own little super universe. But it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun doing it. It's awesome to listen to. Like, it's it's really cool hearing, like, the original news story. Because, you know, some people listen to podcasts just to hear, like, the news. And you guys take that, you you know, cover the news briefly, but then it's like, that's not what it's about. Like, that news is just, like, the inspiration for something creative. Like, you come up with a new, pretty interesting character every time, and it, they vary drastically from episode to episode, not only because you switch from heroes to villains, but, like, you know, sometimes it's, like, a giant robot, and sometimes it's a cat lady. It's, like, it's pretty awesome how much it changes episode to episode. Yeah, we try. Yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. Just some sometimes Tanner will read off the the headline we've randomly selected, and I just don't. I have no idea what on earth we're gonna do with what he presents. And then we we go some real places. It's it always surprises me where we end up by the end of it. It's true, and it it, it always has a nice flow to it. Like I, you can tell that you guys uh, are really comfortable talking to each other and stuff because like there's never a dull moment in the the podcast even if you like kind of run into a creative wall you're like uh well okay let's just back up and go from here sometimes we go completely off track and we're like okay let's bring it back mm -hmm. that was fun let's start from here we have our list of like things to cover and stuff like that the names are probably the hardest part <laughs> yeah the names are always crucial like it's just like naming a band or anything it's like this at once doesn't matter at all and all is also the most important part about this process it's like <laughs> names are really yes. hard sometimes but you guys have some some great names so far how did you guys come up with the idea for for your show for headline heroes oh boy it's crazy it's um, like a pretty nuts concept drew and i were spitballing for a while about doing a podcast i think didn't we come up with like at one point trying to eat different gross food and doing that or something like that <laughs> I think now, we that's did. still on the table. I'm, I, yeah, that that might still be on the table. Yeah. Um, I think what happened with this one is Tanner and I were talking, and I honestly, honest to God, think I I came up with this in the shower, and then I quickly got on and chatted with Tanner about it. I just enjoyed the idea of like creating superheroes and creating our own universe as episodes go on, and yeah, and then and then Nate was there. I was there too. <laughs> I said, "Good job," and I gave him a big old thumbs up. <laughs> you got to have that guy too. Like that's that's Let an me... important part of the crew. <laughs> I love that at the end of the episode, you immediately put that that character in and like build a place for them in the pantheon of other characters you've made. Like very few podcasts kind of take the time to realize like what the significance of that episode is. You know what I mean? It's almost like, oh, there's another one in the tank, like another episode, whatever. But you guys, yeah. you know, you add more meaning to it. It's like what long-term impact on our story is this one new character going to add so it's like buying a new action figure and you're like this changes the relationship dynamics between all my action figures now like it's, it's really exciting to add a new one to the pile the warm-up that i usually do on this show is the toy nato i'm going to grab uh basically a random combination of toy words and we're gonna see if it makes anything interesting our random pairing here is a diy hot wheels car that sounds awesome yeah that's pretty straightforward i agree it is pretty straightforward but it's and honestly you could just paint your own hot wheels car like buy it and like this one's ugly i'm gonna paint it red make it look cooler yeah. hmm yeah, so I guess I'm picturing, I immediately jumped on just the visuals, you know, like changing the, the designs on it, which would be really hard to do by hand, by the way. So maybe like decals would be better, but theoretically you could change out, you know, the wheels, make it like a monster truck and um, make change the body oh, yeah. style and the chassis and the suspension. You could really customize it pretty intensely. Man, I don't want the spoiler on here. here. Just snap <laughs> that thing off. You want that that um, hood that has the engine sticking out? You can get that piece in there. That'd be yeah. awesome. That's kind of cool. Like it could just be like a building toy, like a Lego type of deal with all the different parts. Yeah, oh wait, 100%. oh Lego does that already. Lego could get in on that. Yeah, they already have cars though. Dang it! 
They have so many cool cars. <laughs> Nuts. Uh, well, so this is just a really limited Lego, I guess. That sounds fun. <laughs> 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 no, no, no! It's not limited. It's just hyper tailored to a specific market. Like, yes. there's kids out there who want to go real deep in the car, the car mix and match building, do it yourself uh, sort of toy, and this this caters to them. Perhaps Lego just doesn't go deep enough. That's a good point, and you can always tell that a Lego is a Lego unless it's like really high end build where there's like no studs showing that kind of stuff. But like, if this looks, mm-hmm. you know, if it, all the pieces are die cast and you know you don't see any seams or anything, that wouldn't be on a real car. Like, yeah, that could be pretty sweet actually all right cool you can have like races like each friend like brings their newly invented car oh. car to the table and they yeah. you know you take them down those tracks yeah kind of like um i pinewood made, derby like, kind of thing wooden... yeah pinewood Der- yeah yeah exactly. dude. that's what i was thinking of that'd be really cool and um i was just picturing like a model kit like you could almost just uh I think that the the expression is kit bashing, where you buy multiple model kits and just kind of like smash them together, like create custom creations with like you know the front end of this car, the back end of that car, and then like it's got a Gundam arm coming out of each side or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> to knock Dang. the other cars off. The <laughs> you never know. Getting a little battle botsy. Yeah, or like a uh, Toy Story, like Sid the neighbor's uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> creepy combination. Oh God. Uh, yeah, let's I change the channel. That's getting scary. <laughs> this is getting spooky. It is. Uh, okay, cool. I could get into that. I think that kids could get, get into uh, to building their own Hot Wheels cars, and you could even make, like, a, a TV show out of that, I think, like, you know, where you have to, like, it, I don't know if they're, like, battling or racing or whatever, but you have to, like, customize the car to meet the current conditions that you're you're battling, and hmm, hmm. There's possibilities here. Definitely. All right, let's 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 try for one more here. We've got a monster Mr. Potato Head. Oh. Now, you can make the argument that that's redundant, Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, that's true. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to stick the ears in the eye holes because I'm a little devil child. <laughs> this is a peek into Drew's childhood, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's some definitely weird things going on with that guy. He's a kind of an abomination as well. Hmm. <laughs> and monster, in a way, means really large as well. Like, you could do a, you know, triple or quadruple size, just gigantic Mr. Potato Head. Hmm. You're just sticking, like, instead of, you know, the little bowl- bowler hat on top, just a giant horn <laughs> of some kind. Oh, that's kind of fun. Like arms. Yeah, just doing, like, a Halloween-themed one, you know, where there's, uh, like, a mummy wrapping you can put around it, and, yeah, like Frankenstein bolts. bolts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's kind of <laughs> cool. That's, like, relatively straightforward. You know, it could just be, like, an expansion for your, your classic Mr. Potato Head. But, yeah, that's that's still pretty sweet. It's time for him to come back. Yeah, seriously. And and they could start making it out of, like, different materials. Like, maybe his, his main form is, like, a little bit squishy or, like, translucent or glow-in-the-dark or something like that to be a little bit more, uh, I don't know, kind of gross. <laughs> Appeal to that, that kid's sensibility <laughs> of, like, it squishes, I love it, <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, that that works for me. Anything else you guys want to say about Monster Mr. Potato Head? I just had the idea of being able to open it up and like i don't know see some oh. i don't know maybe that's a little scared no scary. that's that's pretty cool actually like instead of just having the flap on his like butt where you can shove all his pieces inside like if you could open up part of his head and like see his brain in there and like yeah yeah that's cool that's hmm. a good idea wow what is what do you think his skeleton looks like i'm trying to picture his biology is it all just a big skull and then he's got like just... hip hips at the bottom <laughs> Some sour cream in there. In there? <laughs> it's just a potato. I mean, <laughs> some, yeah, originally they were just potatoes. Like, you would bring your own potato and just stick these pieces into a real potato. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's kind of weird. But then, in that way, it's almost more like a, a jack o' lantern, I guess, which you can make pretty monstrous pretty quickly. So, if you could just, like, carve your own Mr. Potato Head, <laughs> carve a scary mouth <laughs> in there instead of just having a smile with a mustache on it, it's like. Just a huge gaping maw with teeth going everywhere. That, <laughs> that'd be pretty rad. And it's also three times the size of a normal Mr. Potato Head. Yes, they're freakish, Gigantic. like genetic engineered potatoes. <laughs> Ugh. They're like That's a just... big basketball or a watermelon sized potato. That's fun. Watermelon. Mm. That sounds pretty <laughs> yummy. Why don't they just make Mr. Watermelon Head? I'm into that. Oh, I'm getting trademark, hungry. trademark. 
<laughs> <That's right. laughs> then you would just have to make giant sized pieces that would fit, you know, a watermelon. That's kind of fun. Hmm. Yeah, and then you sell it for a higher price. Yeah, but the problem with that is the juices would all seep out. Like the the beautiful oh. thing about a potato is it's not juicy and gooey and it doesn't go rotten super fast. But I bet huh. having a bunch of you know impaling several things into a watermelon and leaving it out overnight would get a little bit yucky. Hmm. Then they have to go buy a new watermelon. You yeah, that's true. Money. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and the watermelon, the market. watermelon lobby wins again. <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for that. That was a nice little warm up. Um, you guys are pretty much already warmed up, though. You can tell from just the way that you guys do your podcast, like on a regular basis, <laughs> doing this kind of stuff. So, most people who come on the show, it's like they've never done this kind of thing before. But you guys are are pretty much pros. I think it, this should go pretty smoothly. I hope. Oh boy, pro is generous. <laughs> Lots of live up to. A lot of pressure. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Spider Man. Spider Man. Do you guys like Spider-Man? Yes. Absolutely. Is that why you do like a superhero podcast? Is you like superheroes? We're all pretty big superhero fans. Like we do mm-hmm. love it. Of of the three of us, I would say Tanner is the biggest Spider-Man head. Cool. Here. Yeah, probably. How big is he? Uh, he's kind of a monster, like uh... <laughs> like a large potato. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, I, I that's just like low hanging fruit dad joke. Like, you know, I, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. You're like, oh, you're not that big. Like, I'm taller than you. <laughs> uh, I'm ashaming my ashamed of myself. I don't even know how to say that. I'm ashamed of myself. Wow, I've never said that before, guys. Wow, and I, now I figured hey, it you out. you know, but congratulations. This is the first time you've ever said that. First so of many. Had, had a pretty good run so far. <laughs> pretty good life so far. We're Beginning of the end. Out. Yeah, <laughs> rough. Um, cool. So uh, what if we did, like, a Spider-Man theme park? Let's let's talk about that. What, what would it be like? Are you picturing, um, like, the guest is in the role of Spider-Man? Are there a bunch of Spider-Men running around, or... Is the guest just a civilian of New York City? I had a weird idea that, like, what if right away at the beginning of being in the park, everyone's given a camera and they're told to get pictures of Spider-Man. That's like, great. And maybe, yeah. And then Spider-Man is just, like, hanging. I don't know what Spider-Man would be doing if we they actually have people running around, but they got to get pictures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. And it's almost like you could use uh, social media as, like, a marketing campaign oh, yeah. and you can either be on J. Jonah Jameson's side or you can be, like, trying to represent Spider-Man and, like, you know, take pictures of him doing good things versus, you know, pictures that could be photoshopped to look like he's doing something bad or... Hmm. Hmm. I like the the camera idea. That's cool. Like, you start out in, like, the Daily Bugle then with, like, a J. Jonah Jameson impersonator? Especially if it's J.K. Simmons. Just get him to record, like, uh, video footage and then, like... Because, yeah, you know, you it, it's 2017. Like, it's pretty much the future already. Like, he could just, you know, it could be on the Daily Bugle app, and it's like we're doing a social media contest or a photography contest or whatever, looking for new Daily Bugle, you know, Spider-Man correspondence or whatever. Well, that's pretty Saying cool. something in there about how, like, Parker isn't enough or something. Yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. That's that's really cool. And then if you think about it, like, there are so many different people who have – have worn spider suits over the years throughout the comics and stuff um, that there could be multiples running around. Cause if you're like in a, you know, a scale model of New York city and there's thousands of civilians trying to take pictures of one Spider-Man, like it might get a little bit boring. Like you might go a whole day without seeing him. Yeah. That, that wouldn't be good. There's been so many different Spider-Man costumes in general. I feel like oh, you could just use every sure. single one of them. Yes. That'd be so cool. And you try to, you know, you got to catch them all, like get a picture of every possible suit to, uh, to me, and maybe that, like, once you get enough, like, I don't know, points or whatever, you get enough really good p- pictures, you start getting invitations to different things. Like, you unlock different story events. Like, um, hmm, hmm. What's J. Jonah Jameson's son's name? It's like... He's the wolf Oh! Man. Yeah, he's the werewolf. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, what's his name? I want to look it John, up. It's John Jameson. John Jameson, it. okay. It is. So, like, you know, he's an astronaut. Let's imagine there's going to be a shuttle launch at some point, but, um... And the shuttle launch is at, like, I don't know, 4 o'clock or whatever at this theme park. And so they they send invitations to, like, whoever the top 200 park guests are at the time. Like, 
Um, you know, you've got enough pictures of like, you've got at least 10 different spider suits that you've taken a picture of. It's like, okay, let's push a notification to all those people saying there's going to be a shuttle launch at this location. Like you're invited to be one of the a press member taking pictures of that event. Like you get invited to do different things based on your photography skills. Hmm. Oh, that'd be so tight. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty fun, but it doesn't sound as good for like kids. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if, mm-hmm. if they like don't know how to take good pictures. Um, hmm. I, I mean, if you would could maybe set them up in such a way that like, it's not as though, you know, it, that in such a way that kids could find them or like that with their parents help, they could find enough pictures of Spider-Man. Like if they were committed to it, to yeah. get access to these Spider-Man. Totally. Yeah. And if, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if they go to the, the park just to ride the rides, they don't want to do this picture thing. True. That's fine. That's fine. Mm-hmm. That's a great point. And, and you could kind of have it um, set up, you know, where there's like the kids area and that's just like, there are just Spider-Man walking around so you can like, you know, get a, your, their, your autograph from them or whatever. And those are really easy to take pictures of because they're just kind of standing around. Whereas, uh, you know, maybe mm-hmm. in the main part of the park, Spider-Man's like actually swinging around and like doing some cool stunts and like fighting bad guys and stuff running around like crazy. Yeah. That sounds pretty sweet. And and there are so many different Spider-Man suits. Like that's uh, a big thing in like the Spider-Verse comics and mm-hmm. the um, Shattered Dimensions video game. Like it's just really mm-hmm. cool to, uh, you know, kind of mash up all the different suits, have them all interact with each other. There was some game I used to play, um, like a mobile game that was the only reason I was playing it was to like unlock more suits. Like, you know, it's just a dumb mobile game, but I'm like, there's the hook of collecting the different Spider-Man suits. And I'm so into that. Like, yeah. man, the suits are so cool. Sure. Like every single one of them looks awesome. Yeah. And so, you could have like spider Gwen running around. <laughs> spider ham was the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, some can be more rare than others. So it's like more points if you get them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And you could what would be a rare one. Well, uh, I, mean, I think any of the identity crisis ones should be. That's good. Or like the 2099 one. Like, I guess you're going to have to come up yeah. with like a story, like why these, you know, 1920s Spider-Man and or like Spider-Man Noir, why are they running around modern day New York? It's like, I guess we need some story for that. Or we could just do the modern spider characters if we wanted to. Hmm. I think, I think it'd be more fun to have all of them together and maybe just frame it as, uh, this is some big comic event that like worlds are colliding. Didn't they do that with the Spider Verse stuff? I don't. Yeah, I think so. Yep, they've got to you know get all those people onto the same page somehow. So like, yeah. there's some kind of plot device that that summons them all there. Um, I like that mm-hmm. a lot. So, but I'm picturing this being a little bit like chaotic almost. You know, if there's like I don't know thirty or more Spider characters, and then there's so many different villains we could have, and they're all just kind of running around New York City that's a little bit much, you know, like we might want to like segment it up a little bit, like have maybe each villain has a, like a headquarters or something. Hmm. So one thing that I had sort of thought of, um, so one of the things about, I'm a huge Disney world fan. Uh, and one of the things I'm like obsessed with at Disney world or that never actually came to be was this idea they had had for uh, a dark kingdom. That was basically like, uh, the Magic Kingdom, which is where the castle is, but it was like the villains area. They had their oh. own kingdom where they hung out. And like, there's this concept in Spider Man of the Sinister Six, like his huge six oh, villains. Heck yeah. Like, what if they had their own area of New York City that they've staked out? And like, you go yeah. there and like, it's way darker and you can hear sirens running. And like, Spider Man's still there jumping around and doing stuff, but like, it's sort of just an, like a different area of the park for people to go to. I love that. And and I was just this just popped in my head. It'd be kind of cool if like you know how this in this in the story like the this timeline right here has all the good guys. Maybe there's another timeline that has all the bad guys. Like they've all teamed up. You know all the different versions that Mysterio has gone through and, and all the different versions of the various villains like all the green goblins for example they're all in this other timeline. So maybe the park is like, there's like basically two versions of New York city. And one of them has tons of good guys and it's like somewhat safe. And the other one has tons of villains. And so, you know, once in a while the villains will like mount an attack where they all switch over into the other time stream. And like, there's just, you know, at this one, one event, there's just tons of villains pouring into the streets or vice versa. Like in the, the dark, scary timeline, 
just a ton of Spider-Man mount an attack, and they all break in there and try to take down the villains. That could be kind of fun. Spider War. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could like the 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 border could be like some big like a Times Square sort of area, so you have a big uh, main area that time your guests can go from. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that sounds sweet. That's a good idea. So there's like a a, a no man's land kind of thing, or you know, I guess it's not no man's land, but like an area in between where people can kind of just go. That's like a on the border between the two mm-hmm. two dimensions or whatever. I don't know, and it it might not. We don't have to go with this the different, you know, split time idea, but, you know, we could, of course. We could also just do, maybe the villains have kind of been quarantined in this one area. Like, something had to, unha- to have had happened. Wow, that's a fun sentence. Something must have had <laughs> happened such that there are so many spider man running around, you know what I mean? And so many villains running around. So there's some imperative where there's like, holy crap, this is not just another day in the Spider-Man series. There's tons of bad guys. Like, we need to do other things instead of actually capturing each one of them. Let's just kind of push them into that side of town or just kind of start to like, it's almost like a strategic warfare kind of thing instead of like a one-on-one fight. Once you get to this many, like this scale of, of combat, do you guys have any other ideas how we could like kind of structure it in general, as far as being able to incorporate all these good guys and all these bad guys? I don't know. I'm kind of in, I'm kind of in love with that half and half thing. Yeah, that, that could definitely work. And if you think about, like, if if there's, like, a, an area, whether it's a specific, you know, time stream or however you want to tell a story, or if it's just a part of New York where all the bad guys are, they probably don't want to be roommates, you know what I mean? They're going to spread out a little bit kind of naturally and each have their own, like, skyscraper maybe. So yeah, if you, or, can you yeah. imagine Mysterio's domain? Oh, like, my gosh. That would be so evolution. much fun. Yeah, all the, yeah. like, optical illusions and video tricks and, like, pyrotechnics. I was thinking like a fun house kind of thing, or, yeah. but except not, not fun, but like <laughs> mad house. Yeah. I'm, house. I'm picturing like, um, the Dr. Strange movie, like those kinds of visuals yeah. going on where it's just like super trippy and you're like really confused by what's going on around you. I would love that. That sounds good. So, so maybe let's just kind of do that. Like each, each villain has kind of taken over their own you know, headquarters, like someone has like an airplane hangar, someone's got a skyscraper, um, yeah. someone's taken over the train maybe as their like their area of, I don't know, like they're, they're trying to each come up with their own plans of domination, I'm assuming. Cause you know, that's what any good villain really does. Um, but yeah, they're, they're each kind of going about it a different way. Cause I kind of like that, that the, the good guys have the ability to really work together well and like selflessly <laughs> team up. Whereas bad guys might team up once in a while, but in the end, they're still being pretty selfish, and that's usually their downfall. So that might be a a good way to structure it. Is there any obvious, like, bad guy headquarters, like, in the comics that they they could throw in there? Um, Uh, the sewers, I guess, for Killer Croc. Uh, Yeah, sewers. Osborne. Oh, not Killer Uh, Croc. What? Lizard? What's that guy's name? The the Lizard. lizard. The The Lizard, yeah. Yeah. Doc, Same. Doc like the Thomas. idea of Oscorp, that could be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Oscorp like, have the Green Goblin up there. Of Oscorp. Oscorp's I like the always idea of a me. building like at the top, just looking like a giant nest, and it's the vultures, which is super cheesy. <laughs> but I've always loved cheesy stuff in comics. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Me too. What do and every so think... often, he, is he in there? Is he not in there? Yeah. That are we be... allowing? Like, are we allowing this park to have things that like fly around? Or what? You definitely this is could. The fantasy world, right? It is. We could also. I, sometimes I think too literal. <laughs> I'm just no, like, yeah. oh, boy, Disney can you imagine? Has recently been like... getting patents for drone stuff in their park, so That's we're not exciting. too far away from flying vultures. Seriously, inside the... we we could also just make the whole thing inside of a huge dome and like project it up there. You know what I mean? So there's not actually a vulture flying around, but you can see him up there, like on this huge screen kind of deal. And that might be a good oh, yeah. way to kind of help differentiate, like, are we in regular New York City or, like, the hero version, or are we in the villains area? You know, maybe the the mm-hmm. villains area, it's, like, either dark out or it's, like, twilight where the lighting is just a little bit off, you know, where the hero part is, like, daytime. What I like about your, your dome idea in general for, like, the park is that I think one of, like... Like you get a really great visual, like Drew, meant, you mentioned, uh, you, know, you come into the entrance of the park and say you're, you're dropped right into the Daily Bugle. 
uh, you grab your camera or you don't, you walk on through and then you up to now, you still haven't seen what this park looks like. And then you like step out, out of the daily bugle and like into maybe, maybe you go right into times square and like, you're right in the middle of New York city, like right on this dividing line between the evil side and the good side. And that like, that would be a really cool visual, I think coming into the park. Yeah. And it would definitely, you know, telegraph pretty quickly. Like, do you want to go for something that kind of dark and scary or do you want to just kind of stay with like the, the bright sunshiny experience? Cause you can like, obviously see that if one half of the sky is like scary and then there's like this weird division line down the middle and the other side is nice and pretty it's like well that's good guys that's bad guys i think i get it (laughs) yeah that that's kind of cool i like the way that this is uh this is kind of coming together and i was just thinking with the the camera thing you know maybe you work for you can kind of align yourself to be a hero and you're just taking pictures of of characters for the newspaper like that's relatively harmless but you might be also doing reconnaissance either for the spider group or for the villains like maybe the villains are like we need to see exactly how many enemies we're facing here in this like spider war and so if you can turn in you know a picture of like five or more spider-man characters to the bad guys you get some kind of incentive during down the like the dark path or whatever like you could have some kind of impact on the storyline maybe like if that one day everyone decides to be a bad guy then maybe the heroes lose at the end of the day during the like final battle between the good guys and bad guys would someone get declared the kingpin at the end of it ah (laughs) that that could definitely happen i like that or you know if maybe and, and i like the idea of being able to kind of hire comic book writers for this and like script different events you know maybe the whole month of february like the battle always ends this specific way but then all of march it's totally different and um you know like i don't know some like uh gwen stacy dies every single day during march (laughs) or something like that (laughs) yeah it's a bummer it's rough for that actress but um (laughs) it does have a different story like every time you go back assuming you don't go twice in the same month you get a totally different experience as far as like you know, how things end up and, and then that way you could have it where like, maybe there's one person who's like a a star photographer, one of the park guests, and they're doing really great. And they're turning in all of their pictures to the bad guys. And then in the, the story, you know, um, like Craven dies or something. And then that guest like inherits the role of Craven or like gets one of his artifacts or something like something gets passed on and they get some kind of like token of of like all this work that they did and like that human was kind of like the MVP for the day. So they get some kind of actual like memento to take home from that. That's a cool idea. Yeah. That'd be really neat. Or maybe, you know, one of the Spider-Man characters dies, but your guy was like there trying to help. And your, your guy, I mean, you like the part guest was, (laughs) was there for the good guys. Like you were the MVP for the good guys. This Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2099 dies and you get to like keep his mask or something like as a, a keepsake. That'd be kind of cool. Even if they only, you know, if they have like five or 10 of these things to give out every day, it'd re- be a really special thing for that really small group of people that actually earn them. Absolutely. And it keeps you wanting to come back too, because maybe next time you're the person who gets it or next time, what will the story be? Or maybe somehow you'll be involved next time. Like it's always going to be different and changing, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. That'd be really awesome. Um, Just like a quick aside, do you guys have any, any specific like Spider-Man characters that you really want to like talk about that you really love? Because I know I've got one that's kind of obscure that I'm super <laughs> into. <laughs> but yeah, what, what do you guys think? I mean, we saw, we've kind of hit some of the ones. I mean, I, I don't have anything super Mysterio. obscure, but yeah, mm-hmm. Miss Mysterio is a big, I'm a big fan. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing comes to mind right away. What, do, what are you thinking? Um, well, for Mysterio, I was just thinking this. It'd be really cool to um, to not only have the visual like projection effects going on, but if maybe he's taken over like a really, you know, cool, like art deco building, like a a high rise. And like, you could actually have the building be like a little bit robotic. Like, you know, maybe where like the walls of it can like peel off or like start to like tilt or like the top few stories can like turn on a hinge and just kind of look like they're going to fall and like do these really crazy, like large scale, you know, pretty simple robotic movements. But like, that would really be, trippy and like scary for anyone who's like in the building like you're on the floor of this apartment and then suddenly three of the walls just lift off the ground and start tilting and it's actually doing it it's like a real robotic movement Uh that'd be so amazing 
that kind of effect would be really cool. And I feel like it wouldn't be that complicated, like, you know, using, like, a, a dump truck motor or something to, like, move this, like, the walls up on one wall. That'd be really sweet. Spider-Man! Um, okay, so the character I'm super in love with um, is Supida Man. Have you guys seen that? The the live action Japanese uh, Spider Man series. No, what is? I have all this for me. It, it is hilarious. Um, I'm not sure the exact year it came out, but it's it was like probably the early 70s, and they basically they bought the rights to do a, a Spider Man inspired show. And oh my goodness! This I was just like, found it. <laughs> how do you it, spell it? Um, <laughs> I need to know. S U P A I D A M A N. So Supida Man, <laughs> which that's just how you would say Spider Man in Japanese. But um, it's it's basically Power Rangers before Power Rangers. Like the Super Sentai series had happened, but they didn't have giant robots yet. And so this was, if you think about it, Spider Man looks a lot like a Power Ranger, and it's kind of like he was the proto Power Ranger, the proto Super Sentai character. So he's got wow. a giant robot called yeah. Leopardon. He has like a, <laughs> a bracelet that like launches his costume onto him. So he's just walking around in like civilian mode and like hits something on his bracelet and suddenly he's wearing the whole costume. It's it's hilarious. It's got like that kind of uh 1966 Batman series uh kitsch flavor to it while also like looking like really early those, Power Rangers. It's awesome. One of those rare Spider-Man's do come across. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's right? not even in the park every day. Holy crap, good for you. <laughs> right, it's, it's a great show. And the, I, at least a few years ago, Marvel.com had a ton of, of full episodes you could watch of that show. And, and I'm a huge Power Ranger fan anyway, but watching that as like the proto Power Rangers kind of show, or, you know, Super Sentai is what I should be calling it, so sorry. Um, <laughs> it, it's really, really awesome to watch that. It's pretty weird how how Marvel Jeez. kind of was instrumental in starting that whole franchise. Um but yeah, I just thought it'd be really cool if you if you had a Leopardon section, like that giant robot that he has, which is a really yeah. really ugly robot compared to most, you know, Megazords and stuff. But it'd be really cool to have like is that a giant robot at the Spider Man theme park? Like what the heck? I always wanted <laughs> to really see like that guy come up in the comics. Like I'm sure it's probably a rights issue, but you know, seeing Doc Ock and like the vulture trying to fight that giant robot would be so cool. <laughs> And, you know, if any listener has, has read a comic that's got Leo Pardon in it or Supida Man, let me know, because I've been on the lookout. That would be so sweet. Definitely going to have to watch the show after this. Now. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Are there any other um, Spider-Man heroes or villains that you guys really want to, to come up with a way to incorporate? My favorites are always the Identity Crisis guys. I don't know why I've always loved that one, but I don't really know what to do with them, with, like, Dusk and Prodigy and Hornet and right. Ricochet. Mm-hmm. Those are so cool. They are really yeah. cool looking costumes, aren't they? Yeah. Um. So, what's the storyline with Identity Crisis? Spider Man's wanted like for murder during that time, so he can't actually go out as Spider Man. Um. Otherwise, the police are after him. So he comes up with these four different identities to like continue to be a hero. And Prodigy's actually one that ends up like J. Jonah Jameson even likes Prodigy, and he's the hero he never was really. But they're all just cool different ones. It's like he get gets a chance to like try different marketing strategies and like uh, you know see how the public perceives this character versus that one. Yeah, really. That's awesome because I had seen those those costumes from that game I used to play, but I didn't actually know what their origin story was. I think it's really cool to be able to to incorporate the storylines of each different you know Spider Man character. Like maybe there's a specific mission that you know, you can just help Ricochet do something and you like kind of get to know a little bit of his story or like hear his personality, um, you know, or, you know, what is a like Miles Morales story versus a Peter Parker story versus like one of the clones of Peter Parker. Like, it'd be really cool. Like, I know I'm helping Spider-Man, but then like you actually get to know them a little bit or hear a little bit of their story if you kind of help them on one of their missions. And then you get to kind of find out a little bit more about like which Spider-Man is this. I had this ridiculous idea of Craven the Hunter hunting people, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you could do something where you're tracking Craven. 
Like he, he he's he's leaving trails around the city of like his hunt for us a, a specific Spider Man. Oh, so you're hunting the hunter? Yes. And so you get a little bit of his story as you're tracking him, and eventually you do track him down, and maybe there's like some sort of event or confrontation that you sort of watch. That's great. I really like that. And maybe like um, Spider Man Noir is a little bit more like detective y, so maybe he could kind of help you like learn the ropes of how to how to track. Or if you're going on the villain track, you could, you know, follow Craven around and he's trying to figure out how to track Spider Man. Like you could kind of get similar experiences, but there's the good guy version and the bad guy version, but you still get to kind of do the same activities. That'd be really cool. Yeah. And you, you could also have like um planted uh, employees who look like part guests. So like, I don't know, Craven like fires a harpoon gun or something. And, um, <laughs> oh, suddenly you like look over and they're like, there's a guy who's actually been hit with a harpoon. You're like, what the heck is this a part <laughs> guest? Like, it's actually not like this guy had a fake harpoon, you know, in his shirt this whole time. And he just like activated it or whatever. Um, but it'd be kind of cool to have like, you know, it seems like you're just a huge horde of people living in New York city. You're actually all part guests, but there are some actual like hidden employees, uh, among the crowd it'd be kind of cool i was just thinking about um with the whole i was just inspired by the craven thing what if you're tracking him and you come across craven and he's actually got spider-man hostage and, and uh. somehow it's up to you to like free him because i was just thinking as a kid and i and i help spider-man if i were a kid that would be the greatest feeling in the world <laughs> yeah I, I definitely like the idea of doing that as like as, has having you know some of them are like mass experiences where there's just a ton of part guests in the same spot so it feels like you're actually in new york city but then also having some more intimate experiences like where it's just your group you know it's like maximum of four people can go into this elevator and then once you're in the elevator mm -hmm. you get like a one-on-one -on -one experience with this specific spider-man or this specific villain being able to kind of to break it up into smaller and smaller experiences so you can actually have that where you know your like five year old kid gets to like actually help Spider Man do something. I think it'll be really special instead of just them feeling like they're lost in the crowds of New York City. Craven's just like monologuing. My plan has finally come through. I, unless someone were to pull that lever over there, <laughs> <laughs> it's right next to this five year old. <laughs> That's great. Or you know, you could also incorporate the story elements of like, um, I, I don't know how they would structure this exactly, but where Craven, you know, has Spider Man hostage. And he has, like, a few different demands that he wants to have met. And maybe one of them is, like, um, I need to figure out where the Vulture's headquarters is or something like that. Like, maybe, you know, the villains are starting to turn on each other. And so you can kind of take down one villain to help another villain who will release the Spider-Man. That could be kind of interesting, having, like, some complex story webs like that. It'd be kind of fun. So then you can just say, like, hey, I took a picture of, you know, the vulture's nest like an hour ago. Here you go. And then Craven's like, you know, thanks. <laughs> I don't know how he would act exactly. Thanks. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, Bye, Spider-Man. Nice <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he would probably say, uh, too bad I'm going to kill him anyway. And then at that instant, a bunch of other spider heroes break through and, like, take him down or whatever. But you kind of were a part of that story. And it would be kind of fun. Sure. Yeah. There's a lot going on here. You know what I mean? This park is, is like, there's so many moving pieces and so many different, like, little story events that we could talk about. But we could also get totally lost in the minutia there and just stay, like, you know, what's going on in this room on this floor versus what's the overall experience? What does the guest take home from this park? Instead of getting, like, super granular with it, we can just keep developing other ideas for it. What about his uh, web swinging mechanics? His or her, I guess. They are web swinging mechanics. Because that's always mm. the my favorite part of the video games is being able to, you know, like just swing from a web and like figure out how to do that. It's so much fun. Yeah. So is there a way you can safely make a part guest experience such a thing? I, I know it's kind of technically complicated. I... Yeah, it's, immediately uh... thought of the failed Spider-Man musical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Turn off the dark? Yeah. Recently, uh, last year in January, uh, we went to Universal Studios and we went to the Harry Potter world that they have there. And one of the rides they have is the Harry Potter or it's Hogwarts. Like, and it was kind of a weird, like I had never been in a ride like it before because you actually end up sitting in what basically amounts to a roller coaster bucket seat, but you don't, you're not on a roller coaster. You're so that you're basically hanging from this track that's above you and you basically go through I mean, you go through the grounds, you like, you know, and 
you swing you swing up to like the spider and almost bites you you like swing through the forest and there's like a death eater there and there's dragons flying all around and you, they kind of make it they they set up the ride in such a way that um you feel like you're flying like through the roof into hogwarts like you crash through the through the roof and you really do get this sort of experience like you're flying through the air and sort of like swinging from place to place and they sort of capitalize on the darkness there i think a little bit but um, it does look really good. And I think with a simple, like, you know, ride story trick, like, oh no, Electro or like, yeah, Electro turned off the, the electricity in this area. Like it's, so it's, you know, you're by street lights only. You could, you could recreate the experience of sort of swinging through the air with Spider-Man, uh, in, in a similar fashion. Yeah, that works. Um, there's also yeah. the, uh, the spider cycle is like a cool vehicle, like oh, Spider-Man uh, action figures yes. have pretty much always <laughs> had some kind of motorcycle. They're pretty cool. Like the, the kind of newer, like redesigned ones look really awesome. They look almost like yeah. a Tron cycle kind of thing. Oh man, that'd be a cool Spider-Man. Do you, when the, uh, the Tron movie came out a few years ago, there was like a bunch of Marvel covers had like Tron variants of everyone's costumes. That would be a cool Spider-Man version to have in this park. Like, the Tron Spider-Man, because that thing looked sweet. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Like, there's, like, all these different variant Spider-Man kind of thing. Like, the, the comic book collector crowd would really be into that. Like, you know, they'd be able to name drop what specific, you know, issue of Ultimate Spider-Man that guy's from. Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Iceman and Firestar. The uh, the like stunt shows could be really really cool because I know you know a lot of regular boring old theme parks have stunt shows. So being able to like incorporate that and it's like there's a stunt show going on but you don't really know it. Like it's not on a stage or anything. It's just on this one corner of this block. There's going to be a big fight scene. And it just happens kind of randomly. If you're a part guest, you don't realize that it's going to happen. I think it's kind of anticlimactic if you go wait in line, go sit down, and then Batman comes out and fights somebody. It's like, yeah, that's kind of boring. But, you know, if if it's a, a more interactive park where it feels like it's just an actual city happening, like you're living inside the comic book, you don't know, like, hey, at 3.30, there's going to be a fight between these two characters. It's like, we don't want that. Like, I think a lot of unscheduled events would be really, really fun. Or, you know, they're scheduled, but the the park guests aren't aware of when they're so going to happen. So it's kind of a, a flash mob kind of thing. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. I was just thinking of another um, kind of roller coaster we could do. It's like um, if you get into a taxi or maybe there's like specially marked taxis that, you know, once you get in there, it, it drives you to a certain area where there's like a, a taxi-based roller coaster, you know, like where... Um, I don't know, some bad guy, Scorpion, like, picks up your taxi and, like, throws you into the river and, like, all this crazy oh. stuff happens, but you're just, like, inside the ride vehicle of this taxi. That'd be cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's a little over the top. You know, it wouldn't actually have to, like, get thrown into the river, but, like, the taxi actually just drives into, like, a parking spot somewhere, and then they play the whole experience, and your car gets tilted over, and, like, it's like a 4D theater where it, like, shakes you around a little bit and, like, sprays water on you when you crash into the river. So we've got the the spider cycles, we've got the taxis. Um hmm. Is there anything else we want to do as far as like goblin glider? Oh man. Yeah. yeah. That's if really you progress cool. so far um with the villains like green goblin like you get to go up to some skyscraper green goblins there just like hop on. We're going to go get Spider-Man, I guess. Oh, that's <laughs> great. You want to kill Spider-Man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. And then like yeah, you just get strapped onto the back of it and it goes along some track or something but it's a really well concealed and it feels like you're flying around on this glider yeah. maybe spider-man's chasing you that works too i like that maybe you're you're like hobgoblin you're like throwing little pumpkin bombs trying to hit spider-man oh yeah i would love to huck stuff down <laughs> right that would be fun and it could totally be vr you know where you're you're actually standing on like a, a snowboard sized thing but it's just in a big like room that's just surrounded by screens so yeah, I don't know. That could be really fun. I like the yeah. way that that's set up, and it could be kind of like a carnival game. You know, where you have to like try to hit Spider-Man, or like at least hit his webs to slow him down so he doesn't catch you guys. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. You 
could do some like symbiote storylines. Um, I love Carnage, and yeah. if we can get him in there, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be, be really, awesome. that'd be really interesting, and it'd be neat to be able to do him as you know, kind of a walk around character, like an actual costume. But maybe before that, like you can kind of see some like CG version of him where he's got that kind of fluidity to him, um, which I'm hoping the Venom movie has a lot of, like, because I just really like yeah. the the kind of you know. I don't know what to, how to describe it, but like the way that those two kind of move around and the way that their biology isn't like a hundred percent like defined, I think that's really fascinating. And so if you could see, you know, maybe when you see him like on some kind of screen somewhere, like you're looking through the side of the train and it's actually a screen, not a window. And you see venom like up close and he's all like crazy and like drippy and gross looking. But then there's actually a real guy in a venom costume as well that can't do that of course but he's just running around and it's like oh that's the same character like he attacked us on the train and now i see him down there running that way like making sure basically that there's only one of each character that there should only be one of because you know there's going to be some duplicates going on because of the timeline here but that'd be kind of kind of neat if you like are you know where venom is at any one specific part because it'd be kind of well I, i don't know if that's a big deal (laughs) <laughs> I'm kind of making a big deal of it, like, not trying to break the immersion by seeing, like, hey, there's two Cravens right here. Like, that's not very good. Um, but I don't know if we need to worry about that quite like Disney does. You know, like, I don't, there can yeah, be I two don't see why. based on the time, I just, you know. The I just lines. had the uh, a random thought that I think is cool to ex- explain why all of these um, variations of characters are together as one, like why there are like hundreds of Peter Parkers somewhere. Yeah. What if like at the top, like you just see Kang the Conqueror hovering above everything? Mm-hmm. Now, do we all know who Kang is? Yeah. Yeah. He's he's, he's the time traveling like villain of the Avengers. What if for some reason Spider Man got on his radar and that's the ultimate plot? He's brought all of them together to kind of just test everything or something i don't see know See which one is the strongest spider-man see which yeah. who's the strongest villain like Ooh. sort of a secret soon wars as, style thing except yeah. with kang yeah as soon as, as soon as you can mess with time like as kang does he why not because i think once kind you're deal. yeah once you're on that big of a of a scale like you know those there are definitely some some super villains who don't particularly care about New York City, for example. It's like not like this specific moment doesn't really matter much to that villain. It's almost like it's more of a game for him, or he's just doing things to entertain himself. So like his his reasoning doesn't necessarily have to make sense to someone on our like regular human scale. It's just like he's doing this weird thing and and making kind of a fun experience for us in the meantime by adding if, in like... all these good guys, all these bad guys. What if it was like a very rare thing for someone, to, some park goer, to actually reach Kang, and oh. Kang reveals to them like it was actually to discern to determine like the strongest down in the park, and that turns out to be you, the person who actually reached them. Whoa, wouldn't that, me? Wouldn't that be just, I'm the boom. special one. <laughs> yeah, somehow you've earned that privilege to go up there. That's awesome. I like that a lot giving it more of a you know like a, there's a an end game almost like if you're a diehard fan of this park you keep coming back enough times and then like figure out how to level up you know you, the good guy path or the bad guy path enough to where you can actually affect the main storyline that's that's pretty rad have we all seen westworld World? yes yes. yeah <laughs> it's I was just kind of like a maze thing <laughs> <laughs> right seriously where and if you think about it like if Kang is, is, um, it's kind of like, this is his dollhouse, you know, like he's put all these things in here, then it's really all for his entertainment. And he might start to get bored with it and try to reach out to specific part guests. And I don't, I don't know exactly what his purposes would be, but there's some, some reason why he might want you to transcend and become a Spider-Man or become a villain because he sees some potential in you. You will become the new Kang. Ah, maybe he's trying to get a replacement, like something, you know, he's, he knows he's dying or, um, yeah, some kind of, you know, energy level for him is, is almost running out and he's like, I need to find a successor. The next like big thing that I keep wanting to get into is other Marvel franchises that kind of, you know, intersect with the Spider-Man universe. And we've already got so many heroes and so many villains just from this, you know, just Spider-Man series, Spider-Man comics. But if we wanted to, 
you know, we could get into his time with like the Fantastic Four or the Future Foundation or the Avengers or like the Dark Avengers. Like there's all these different, you know, depending on what we get the rights to, I guess we could have other superheroes helping out, but it does get to start. It could be just a month. Like oh, April, yeah. the Avengers are here now. That's a great idea. That's really good advertising. You know, summer 2018, sure. um, you know, the Avengers, Marvel Cinematic Universe version of the Avengers. And then, um, you know, maybe one one month they have, like, you know, the original lineup of the Avengers from, like, the early comics. Because we can kind of play around with the timeline, because this is kind of like a got the kind of time elements going on with Kang and everything, you know, maybe right. this is a few years in the future or you know, after Spider-Man's pretty well established and there's like a Spider-Man museum. So you could go in and like kind of learn, like, I don't know if they want to use fully fictional history or like the real history of like, um, you know, the, the like actual origins of the character and like all the different designs of costumes they've gone through. It could be kind of interesting if you, Oh, I would love to see a hall of costumes. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be sweet. And Just maybe walk through. Yeah, maybe the way that it's set up is like, um, you know, the park closes at 10 p.m. or whatever, and there's a certain part of the park that's only available at the very close, like the very end of the day. So at the end, at 10 o'clock, they funnel everyone through this one specific room or this one specific area, and it's like the aftermath of the story. It's like, you know, in the end, you know, the villains were defeated and sent back to their own time, blah, 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 whatever. And then this is like five years later. It's like it it pops up. Um, and just says five years later when you're on your walk to this through like to the exit of the park, and that's when you get to the museum. You're like it has basically the story of what you just lived through. You get to like go through and like see a a museum of it, almost like in um, I think it was Captain America: The Winter Soldier where he goes to like that museum exhibit of like yep. <laughs> a historical event he was involved in, like that kind of kind of thing as a way of wrapping it up would be really interesting to like. And it, maybe it even acknowledges like specific park guests you know what i mean like the mvp type people actually have their picture there like you can see them with J. jonah jameson in one of the articles you're like holy crap like i know that guy like <laughs> it'd be really interesting that's when the social media comes in like at the yeah. end of the day the park workers pick out oh this one was awesome this is a great picture and just put it up there <sighs> that's really great yeah and with with you know however many of your park guests decide to be photographers you would have so many cool spider-man pictures to to put up or um you could have like caption the this photo contest like if someone takes a really awkward you know picture of like spider-man sneezing or whatever like you could um, caption (laughs) caption this photo (laughs) have like some kind of fun like uh you know deadpool inspired like uh comedy type contests i love it yeah yeah this sounds super fun um what do you think about for a name I feel like it should be something comic booky. It shouldn't just be it's, Spider-Man Land. It's the Peter Park. <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> sounds terrifying. <laughs> Peter Park. Did you say Peter Spider Park. Spider-Land? Spider-Land, which sounds yeah. horrifying. That's yeah. a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That sounds like your worst nightmare, Tanner. Yeah, now, Tanner, like, it's really uh, kind of weird that you love Spider-Man but I, are terrified of spiders. I, I, have, I stay up at night thinking of this irony in Tanner's life. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's great. We could just have a cool name of, like, you know, the, the comic book arc that this would be based on or whatever. You know, cause yeah, the, that's, that's... yeah, just having, you know, Spider-Man something of something. <laughs> I was going to say something of time, but I'm like, yeah, that sounds kind of dumb. Um, Is this of time? <laughs> are there any specific storylines that are Kang the Conqueror ones? Let's see. Um, hmm. Do you guys have any other ideas for names? I, think I, I think we nailed it with Peter Land. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Peter <God>. Park. <laughs> oh, <could> like, <laughs> I mean, if you want to make it more Spider-Man-y, you could like, I mean, so, so instead of just saying Spider-Land, and make it the Amazing Spider Land or something like yeah. that. Oh, so like, not that's the good. Amazing Spider Man. Or the spectacular Spider Man. Yeah, land. that's good. Use some of those some of those adjectives. Ultimate Spider Land. And you could even change that from you know year to year as different storylines are going on. You know, if there's one that's really heavy on like the Ultimates, Miles. you could call it Ultimate Spider Land. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, they. 
I mean, Spider Family is not nearly as cool as Spider Man, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to find some cool um, Kang storylines, but I, I just noticed that he was. He's been in two different teams. One of them was the Council of Kangs, and the other one is the Cross Time Kangs. So we could have even different variations on Kang, which would mean that his motivations for bringing all these people together would be different if they're different Kangs for different, you know, different storylines. That's kind of cool. I, if I, it's gotta, if, if we, if this is a Spider-Man park, I feel like it shouldn't have Kang in yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. I was just thinking that Kang. same thing. I think that's like a little bit too specific. Like that's maybe the story behind the story, but like the headline has to be Spider-Man. And maybe, and since maybe that's like the story that very few people find out, so mm-hmm. it's like a secret. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of really like the simplicity of the amazing amazing Spider Land and yeah. the spectacular Spider Land this year, or amazing or Ultimate Spider Land. Yeah, Spider Land twenty ninety nine. Yeah, you could yeah. you could make it the Amazing Spider Land, and then just like have like colon you know Battle for New York twenty ninety nine. You know. Yeah. Blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. Like uh, the thing after the colon always be changing yeah. to reflect the storyline of the park. Spider Land Unlimited and um Spider Land Island for the Spider Island storyline. There's that's I mean I it's very flexible. I like that just having as long as the keyword Spider Land is in there, you can kind of change the title from year to year to go with the uh new marketing materials and stuff. That's pretty rad. Um yeah, yeah this is great. And there's so many awesome characters. Like, um, you know, we, we're going to have some really interesting, like, little intimate experiences, like a lot of those. But there's also just a ton of characters you would have to have. Um, that'd be, like, a big part of the park, I think, is just seeing all the different characters. And, like, you know, today there's this this version of Flash Thompson, whereas it might be a different one next month. Like, you might have some kind of, like, limited edition characters that you only get to see for certain visits. That'd be really awesome. Man, that was that was a fun one. This is really awesome. <laughs> When's this park go into development? Yeah, I mean, uh, that was the deal <laughs> with the podcast, right? Make the park then, right? Well, I really wish, like, I want yeah. to have you know a part two where we start like uh, writing all the ads for the people we need to hire and like hiring the the contractors, like start getting some bids on how much it would cost to build a dome around like a New York City like four square blocks. That'd be a or fun whatever. episode for you of like, <laughs> let's do the math of how much this <laughs> theme park we made would actually cost. Yeah. No kidding. It'd be pretty wild. But, I mean, I think Marvel can afford it, or Sony, or maybe they have to do a joint a joint well, cu- custody Disney. thing. <laughs> Disney could afford it. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. With Sony. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that Spider-Man is not back with Disney quite yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's kind of a weird thing. It's like a, a family after a divorce a little bit. <laughs> Some shared, yeah, like... shared custody. It's a little weird. Um, I was just thinking with with Marvel, it'd be kind of cool if you had like an Ant Man area where you could like shrink down, and so then there's just a ride where you're just like riding down one of Spider Man's webs or like getting launched out of his like web shooters or some you know like really small scale. No thrill. one's expecting Ant Man, and then Ant Man out of nowhere, I'd be like, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> or I mean, if you have enough imagination, Ant Man is pretty much everywhere. It's just really, really small. <laughs> he could be. He's he's here right now. He's uh, yeah. He's with us all. Atomic level, Ant Man. <laughs> oh man! Or like uh, he could turn into Giant Man, and then he could fight Leo Pardon like a giant. Size. <laughs> <laughs> that's call right. on the big gun. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Cool. Is there anything else you guys want to add while we're here? One thing I had thought of when we're talking about theme months was October could be like the villains take over everything. That's oh, great. Yeah. That's and really have, like, fun. Focus on more of the like yeah. Halloween type ones like John Jameson is a werewolf. Uh, have Mobius there because he's a vampire. Yes. Goblin. I thought of other ones. The Who living vampire. That? Goblin. 
Yeah, yeah anything. Goblin. Like Random anything that would Carnage. be way more Halloween oriented. Yeah, that's really great. Um, have you guys read the um, uh, any of the Dark Avengers series? Only a little bit. I okay. didn't get much into it. Yeah, it was it was one. I mean, I I get it in and out of comics pretty frequently, but this was one I was like super diehard about. It was like I don't know, two thousand nine or two thousand ten or something. But basically, uh, Norman Osborn takes over control of the Avengers, oh. and he basically yeah. hires a bunch of villains to impersonate the uh, Avengers. So like, Wolverine's son takes over the role of Wolverine, and like. Venom Bullseye takes over the role Hawkeye. of Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. Because you know all the good guys pretty much have a bad guy counterpart, True. and and that was really cool. Because um, basically all these characters that just look like the good guys are actually bad guys, and like they're extremely murderous and crazy. And you could do that for the Halloween, like the villain takeover. You know, maybe the city is still split, and there's the the good guy looking area and the bad guy looking area. But you go talk to Spider-Man, and it's actually Venom or you know all of the yeah. all the good guys are actually bad guys it'd be really exciting to to get over there and you're like i've been here so many times with the heroes the hero side's way awesome and then you realize those are actually ba- oh. bad guys as well we could they could do a complete entire arc of just everyone has been venomized i suppose yeah like a venom burst so. oh, yeah Venomers. symbiote there we go <laughs> so there's like symbiote vulture symbiote oh. everyone Damn, yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, that, yeah. that sounds awesome. And you could even do like a um, role reversal. You know, if you're pulling people from like every time stream, there could be like a Peter Parker that eventually became the Vulture, eventually became Sandman. Like, there's a bunch of bad guys that would have in this one specific timeline become good, and a bunch of good guys that would have become bad. That's really fun. I, I want to go to that that universe where everything's like flip flopped and. You know, even being the biggest... You have to work with the villains. Right. Even being, like, the biggest comic book fan ever, you're like, wait, what? What issue did this happen in? They're like, no, this is in the theme park. Like, you don't... This isn't in the comics at all. You have to live this one. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. And then eventually, you know, becoming a comic book writer is not that exciting. You want to go work at the theme park where you actually get to force people to live your stories. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be cool. cool to, at the end of the day, be able to just buy a personalized comic book that was <gasps> kind of your stuff. Yes. Oh. That you experienced. That's amazing. You know, if, if we get to go through the museum at the end, you know, there's maybe a gift shop attached to that, which, like, takes into that specific day's events and makes... You can upload your camera to it. Yeah. Your pictures, stuff like that. And they can do, like, filters on your photos to make it look like a comic book. Oh, man. It keeps track of what rides you went on, so it's just like defeated uh, Sandman on the roller coaster, and like does a quick write up of that. That's amazing, and like there's like specific page layouts, like the comic format layout. So like whatever you did first goes in the top left panel. Whatever you goes in the, did next goes in the top right panel, and like they could they could automate it so it goes pretty quickly. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't mm-hmm. have to be a, a purely like artisan thing where someone spent hours making this thing. Like they can kind of just print it like it tracks you around that what you off, did. yeah oh that's great and then maybe you could get um like different art styles like you could have it printed with like old-fashioned like four color printing process so it looks like a 70s comic book or you could have it with like really nice glossy modern comics oh that's great or you can <laughs> they could even like um just send you a pdf and you can just put it in your comiXology app it's like here's that time <laughs> i went to to spiderland Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for going on this this journey with me. This is this has been really fun. This is a definitely a, a unique park. I was kind of worried it might be like kind of similar to our our Gotham Batman one, but it's it's totally not. Like Spider Man is has got so much of his own flavor, and I think that really carried through into the way that we we set up this park. This was this was great. Thank you so much for being on. Thanks for, having, for having, us. having us. Yeah, this has been great. I would recommend to the listener to check out Headline Heroes. It's an awesome awesome podcast. Um, where should where should we go for your guys' social media? If you want to uh, check us out on Twitter, we're, um, we have a Twitter handle, is, uh, headline, and then underscore or heroes. Um, and we do have an email you can uh, get after us at, I believe it's headlineheroescast at gmail.com. Yeah, we take submissions for uh, headlines to throw in the pool to try and make something out of. Thanks for listening to episode 14. Our next episode will be on Capcom. 
So if you have any ideas for that park, feel free to head over to our subreddit, which is reddit.com slash r slash amusement sparks. Or you can also find us at, on Facebook at facebook.com slash amusement sparks. Also, as always, amusementsparks.com is our, our home on the web. And we are actually on YouTube now. So um, it can be a little hard to find, but if you search for amusement sparks and then click the little thing at the top that says, yes, I meant amusement sparks, not amusement parks, then you'll find all the videos on there. You could also search for Kuyomi, which is my, my YouTube channel, and also kind of like my personal like brand that I'm, I'm working on here. So it is kind of bigger than Amusement Sparks, but uh, it does include all the Amusement Sparks video videos. So if you search C-U-Y-O-M-I on YouTube, you'll definitely find it there. Cool. Thanks for listening. Uh, enjoy the next three weeks, and I'll see you with the Capcom episode.